Hi, my name is Parsa Ashrafi and this is my presentation for the course STAT 946 Deep Learning. The title of the paper that I'm going to present is Learning to Generalize Meta Learning for Domain Generalization. Uh, here we can see a brief overview of the whole slide that is divided in three sections. First, I'm gonna introduce and define some basic definitions. Um, then I'm going to talk about the paper and the methodology, analysis, and then I'm going to show some experimental results on the paper. So you're gonna hear the words domain and domain shift a lot in this slide so I'm gonna introduce these terms for you so what is domain and what is domain shift the data that we work on may have come from different distribution as for a picture they can have different lighting and different camera angles or they may have different texture for example a picture and a drawing of a car they do differ in distribution although they do have the same object inside so we are going to call different data distribution domains and the change in these distributions are domain shift. Despite humans, uh, the standard learning algorithms that we know so far would fail on these domain shifts uh, because we keep feeding them this data from the same distribution. So we can't expect them to work well on new unseen domains. So if we want them to work well, we have to have domain agnostic approaches, meaning we have to have um, features or models that don't depend on domain, but they can somehow extract some semantic features from this data set. The field of work on domain agnostic approaches is called multi-domain learning. And there are two main approaches on the field based on how the model will be trained. The first approach is called domain adaptation. Um, in this approach, we train the model on some number of uh, domains, and then we feed few unlabeled or weakly labeled data from target domain to the model. As you can expect in this approach, the model may work well on the expected target domain, but it may it will have problems uh, on the unseen uh, domains, and it needs to be trained and fine-tuned again each time we're going to uh, work on a new domain. Uh, the second approach that is uh, in our focus is called domain generalization, and it's function well even in new target and testing domains. Domain generalization is less studied than domain adaptation, mainly because it's newer and it's been introduced in the last few years. Uh, since then, many papers have been published on the subject, and among them there are three common approaches. In the first approach, they train a model for each source domain, and when they uh, work on a new unseen target domain, they're going to estimate which one of the models work better and use that model for the matter. In the second approach, they extract some domain agnostic component, believing that any domain is composed of a domain agnostic factor and a domain specific component. And then when they extract this domain agnostic factor, they, it can be used later as a good domain generalization model. And in the third approach, uh, a domain invariant feature representation is learned such that it minimizes the gap between target domains. So in this slide, I'm going to introduce meta-learning. Meta-learning models are capable of adapting to new tasks and new environments that have never been encountered before. And it's similar to human experience. Since humans perform well on new tasks and environments they never encountered before, since they have the memory and experience of working on new tasks. There are also three common approaches for meta-learning. The first approach is called metric-based approach and is based on measuring the similarity between two data samples. It's somehow like k-nearest neighbors and it exploits kernel density estimation. 
The second approach is called model-based, and in this approach, model tries to update its parameters rapidly, and these parameters update can be achieved by this internal architecture, or it can be controlled by another model. In the optimization-based approach, the optimizer of the model is designed such that it can be converged in few small steps. And there is also a specific kind of meta-learning uh, that's called model agnostic meta-learning. Model agnostic meta-learning is an optimization-based meta-learning approach. Uh, as you can understand from its name, it's model agnostic, so it's applicable to most models. So it's most favorite among data scientists since it can apply to almost every standard deep learning models. And it's somehow close to paper's approach. Uh, in paper, we use dummies instead of tasks. Just to summarize what model agnostic meta learning does, it um, updates the parameters in each step. Uh, with respect to case samples from each task and at the end it uses a linear combination of these uh, optimization steps to update a whole parameters. Learning for domain generalization uh, or its short form MLDG functions in a model agnostic setup. It tackles the domain generalization problem in a model agnostic way. Uh, it's a meta learning approach and it uses domains instead of tasks. And the idea of the paper is that it introduces an objective function that the model parameters are adapted to domain shift. And for the methodology, I have to uh, introduce some parameters first. And we have S source domains called S, we have T target domains called T, and we have S minus V meta trained domains uh, called S bar, and we have V meta trained domains. MLDG, uh, as per paper, is explained in two learning uh, setups. First, supervised learning and then reinforcement learning. In the following slide, I'm going to explain each one of them clearly. In this supervised setup for meta-learning domain generalization, there are two steps in training. The first step is called meta-train. In the meta train step, the model is updated on all the S minus V meta train domains in aggregate. And the last function is as below, where L function inside is cross entropy loss function, and N is the number of uh, samples in each domain. And in this step, parameters are updated by gradient descent. In the meta test step, uh, the inner loss function L is also a cross entropy function, but it's, it's based on V uh, test domains. Um, here the parameters are not updated, it's postponed to the final objective function that I'm going to explain next. Uh, but as you can see, the theta or parameters that are used in this meta test function are updated in previous steps. So we expect uh, second derivatives in the next step. And uh, the next step that is uh, writing the final objective function, uh, we see that the previous meta train and a linear combination of that and uh, the current meta test function are used and minimized as a final objective function. So here we can see a summary of the algorithm for supervised setup of MLDG. We have S domains, we have model parameters that is called theta, we have some hyperparameters for updating gradient descent. And for enough iterations, these domains are split into two sets of domains. The first set is used in meta-train step, the loss function as we described. 
uh, was defined, gradient step was used, and parameters were updated. In meta test uh, step, the other set of domains are exploited. Another loss function is defined, which is going to be used in the last step. Here in the meta test step, the updated parameters were used. So we expect to have second derivatives in the final meta optimization step. In this step, uh, the two loss functions are combined linearly uh, to extract uh, gradient descent uh, factors uh, for updating the parameters. The intuition of this, uh, these algorithms are provided in this slide later. Now I'm going to explain the methodology for reinforcement learning of Meta learning domain generalization. Here, domains map to environments in reinforcement learning. Here, A stands for action, PI stands for policies, X stands for states, R stands for return of rewards. And here, we use policy based reinforcement learning instead of uh, Q functions, but it's also applicable for Q functions. In the current reinforcement learning setup, the meta train uses negative return as a loss function and it updates policy like previous as uh, supervised learning approach. And meta test is also the same as supervised. It works on V domains or V environments and it uses updated parameters or updated policy from previous meta train step to update policy on final objective function. It also uh, produces second derivatives. The functions on final objective function is uh, similar to previous supervised learning approach, but here policies are updated instead of uh, the loss function and model parameters. In the following slides, I'm going to talk about analysis of the paper, analysis of the loss function and what the paper is providing, what is the intuition of the functions that we learned so far, and so on. As we saw, the loss function, the final objective function, is a linear combination of the two loss functions in meta test and meta train steps. Uh, it somehow gives us the intuition of tune such that after updating the meta train domains, performance is also good on the meta test domains, since we are using two loss functions on meta test and meta train domains. So this is somehow comprehensible. The next analysis step that we're going to have is going to be derived from Taylor expansion for meta test loss function. Uh, as you can see below, uh, here x dot, as you know, is a point really close to x. So putting uh, theta minus alpha f prime theta as x and theta as x dot, we get the function below, as you can see. And if we put it in the main objective function, we have uh, the term that you can see here. So what does this term tell us? As you may know, the dot operation computes the similarity of two vectors. Here we have the negative of dot product of g prime and f prime. So here we can have the interpretation of tude such that both domains losses are minimized. As we can see, f and g, both of them are minimizing. And also such that they descend in a coordinated way. And by a coordinated way, we mean similar direction of improvement, as we can see by the dot product that we have in this loss function. The paper also introduces two alternative loss functions of MLDG. The first one is similar to the interpretation that we have earlier. Um, it uh, it's computes the dot product of f prime and g prime. It's normalized dot product of f prime and g prime, which is the cosinus function, uh, and it computes the similarity between these two uh, f prime and g prime loss functions. The second one it omits the g function as it says that when we minimize f prime such that 
it can go further in gradient descent, the g uh, function's gradient values are already zero. So it uh, just uh, computes the g prime as we had before. Here, uh, uh, I'm just going to show you some experimental results that the paper had. Um, the first experiment was some synthetic binary classifier data that it produced. Um, it produced nine uh, synthetic training domains for binary classifications, and it tries to learn decision boundaries uh, based on two baseline methods. The first one, without considering domains, and the second one, uh, was the MLDG approach. As we can see from uh, bottom row images, the left one is uh, without considering uh, domain generalization, without considering domains. As we can see, it overfitted. But the other three were three uh, alternative variants of MLDG, and all of them are really close to a perfect binary classifier. The second set of experiments was on object detection and on PAX dataset. Here you can see a subset of PAX dataset which has four domains, art paint, cartoon, sketch, and photo. Uh, as the paper explained, it, it beats other domain generalization methods with average of 70% accuracy on domains. It's somehow surprising that the uh, top accuracy that uh, the state of the art paper could get was 70% and it shows how hard and incomplete the task is. For the reinforcement learning approach, uh, there was two experiments. The first one was for, for cartpool tasks. To explain this, as you can see on the above picture, uh, it's a cart that's trying to uh, hold a pole vertically. And it comes with nine domains with different experiment settings, for example, different poles, different cart mass, and etc. Um, and among all other uh, reinforcement learning techniques, it has the most return among all other methods. Um, the second set of experiments was mounted car. As you can see, there is two uh, hills, two peaks, and this car should try and go to the mountain on the right. And, uh, for trying to generate different domains, uh, different heights of mountains is introduced. And here, uh, the simple MLDG, not the two variants, outperformed other methods. So this was my presentation. If you had any question, you can find me at this email address. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it.